This is our land, our country, our province, our lakes, and our nature to enjoy and cherish and to explore. Hi, my name is Ansel, and we are the Cascadia Overland Crew, a small group of people living in British Columbia, Canada. We like to travel to beautiful places, close and far away, and take in all the beauty that this beautiful land has to offer. We take our vehicles to somewhat remote places to see places that many people only dream of. So whether you're an experienced wheeler, a beginner overlander, even a relaxed camper, or just a fellow dreamer, join us on a new season of exploring and overlanding. You're going to love this one. Ah, the official air down, the start of every journey. <laughs> yep, <laughs> just the way it is. I mean, we didn't really have to air down for this part of the, the road, uh, but I know we're snaking up some mountain, so we'll probably need, need it for that. A little more traction, a little more, a little more power to the wheels. More <laughs> traction, more power. Okay, so here we are. We made a few new changes to our truck over the past several months. So I thought uh, I'd ask Ansel here to just give us a quick walk around, show us, show us what we've got in our, on our truck now. Okay, so this is a coastal off-road rear bumper. It's a steel bumper. Provides more clearance, let us, uh, lets us put an extra tire on the uh, jerry cans. I did a review on it. That video was posted quite recently. What else is on this vehicle? There is a, there's a lift kit on it. Um, so we changed the rear airbags because it's a V8, uh, fourth gen 4Runner uh, Limited. It came actually with rear airbags rather than coils from the factory. So it's good for towing, but if you're doing this kind of you know off-roading and stuff, it's not that great. So Allison and I uh, took off the airbags and put coils on, and that gave it a lift in the rear. Um, prior to that, we were just using the airbags to lift the vehicle up while we were off-roading. And the front was lifted with coils as well. So these are Old Man Emu heavy-duty coils, 2896, I believe. And the front ones are 2886. So they're also the heavy-duty coils made for bumpers, but uh, ours is a V8, so there's quite a bit of extra weight at the front anyway. So I think the, the heavy-duty coils do, do good. Um, what else? We got bigger tires on it. These are 285-7017 uh, Wrangler Duratrac. They're, they're pretty good. They're aggressive. They're good. Those are I Icon alloy wheels. Uh, 17 inches, zero offset. So there is a little bit of tire poke, but I don't think it's in that like special illegal range yet. Uh, there is a little bit of tire poke. Um, what else? It's got Bilstein 5100 shocks, both front and rear. But that was done before we even had this vehicle. The old owner did that. Um, what else? It's got a Yakima roof rack, uh, courtesy of our friend Nick. Uh, really, really helpful for carrying boxes and going camping and stuff. You can hear a helicopter up there. I think that's a search and rescue helicopter. But anyways, uh, the front, um, other than the coils and the shocks that I've already talked about, the old man emu coils and the Bilstein 5100 shocks, uh, put SPC upper control arms, adjustable upper control arms. So that really helps uh, bring everything in alignment for off-roading and stuff. So the camber and the, um, uh, the camber and the, what's the other word? Caster are, are quite, quite well uh, adjusted. Um, and that really helps with, with everything to do with off-roading that we want to do. What else? I cut, the, I cut the front bumper. So I didn't, instead of getting a steel bumper with a winch and everything, um, I just cut the front bumper, which provides, actually provides a quite a bit more clearance. You wouldn't think that, but it makes a huge difference actually. The front of the vehicle has a Neolite, Nylite, I don't know what, how to pronounce it, uh, light bar. That was one of the earlier uh, things that we put on there because we were going on a very long trip and we were gonna do quite a bit of night driving. So it's very helpful to have that on there. And it's like, it's really cheap and it's been through hell. So if you watch season one, season two, and uh, now season three, I guess, this has been on there the entire time. So through mud, snow, 
rain it's it's done it all and there's no condensation in it and it looks great and it works fantastic so it's pretty cheap and the reason why i got a cheap one is because look at the location right if you're gonna hit things it's gonna be right at the front so anyways very happy with that that's pretty much it um i mean there's suspension components right so like cam bolts and those kind of things i did uh, pretty much everything at home by myself or with uh, with jordan um we've we worked on it ourselves and gotten everything the way it is right now it's been to a shop once actually went to overland garage so if you haven't checked those guys out they're in burnaby bc uh check them out they're pretty pretty good at their jobs but anyways that's the only time it's been to a shop uh otherwise i do everything myself to it um i figure you know if you're off-roading with this kind of vehicle you should know how to how to work it and how to fix it and you know do everything yourself rather than taking it to a shop and yeah sometimes there's just no time right like the reason why it actually went to a shop in the first place was i just didn't have time the axle boot uh, had broke like cracked open and it needed to be like i needed a new axle basically at the front so cv axle was changed at that point but yeah anyways we're gonna head out um go up this hill and go explore a little bit stick around As much as we would love all trips to be on dirt roads without any traffic, you've actually got to get out to these places on the highway. So after a few hours of highway driving, we were finally getting some traffic-free bliss. However, the driving didn't last that long because we were already stopping to admire some awesome sights. Holy, look at this beautiful spot. Welcome back. Thank you. How's it going? Actually, it's not welcome back. I've never been here before. It's welcome to this new beautiful land we have discovered today. That is true. That is a cool freaking river. Yeah. Isn't it? This place, the green river surrounded by trees with yellow, red, green, and brown leaves, had a strangely nostalgic feeling to it, bringing back thoughts memories and sounds of days long past. I hope you don't mind sitting back and enjoying the views with us. Our journey so far, on the paved road and off of it, had been very rewarding. The fall colours in British Columbia, though not as vibrant and lush as those in eastern Canadian provinces, reminds me of my youth, driving around with my family through the farm roads in Ontario, taking family photos to send to our family across the world. It was clear to us so far that this drive and trip was going to be very beautiful indeed. How you doing? Pretty good. This is a marshy kind of lake, eh? It's not, it's I wouldn't even swamp. call it a lake. It's a swamp. swamp. <laughs> a pond. Well, you can camp next to it, but there'd be a hell lot of mosquitoes, I bet. Yeah, it's not moving at all. Oh, They're here's very the river, green. Though. Oh, yeah. Very green. Very 
So we continued driving ahead, searching for a place to spend some time and enjoy nature. Unfortunately, not every spot you stumble upon turns into something spectacular. Because we're exploring places for the first time, there are often dead ends and spots that just don't feel as awesome as we had hoped. This was one of those spots. The solution then is to keep driving until we find a spot that fits just right. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have found us a pretty cool spot by this nice, calm river. Look at that. What's up, buddy? You find a cool camping spot? Yeah, I mean, somebody's been here recently, left with some wood. There's a nice little table here. There's a nice little table here, yeah. It's made right into the to the tree. Oh, that's pretty sweet. There's some leftover logs and stuff. Yeah. Look, there's a little path. Come on, Dante, let's follow the path. Ooh, a path. I bet that goes right down to the water. Oh, yeah. Does it? Yeah, there's water right there. Oh, yeah. And, uh, it doesn't really go anywhere, to be honest. It's really thick! Oh my god. Oh yeah, it totally doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> Sometimes, you take a path, and it doesn't go anywhere. But this one, by the drive, was pretty cool, but... Yeah, down there, I guess there's nothing. A little timeout area for your kids. <laughs> timeout area for your kids? Whoa! You can wear a little boat out here. Get a canoe or a kayak. Kayak, yeah, totally. You definitely could. Nice little cove. Yeah. Dante likes it. I think we found ourselves the winner. Well, you could easily swim in here if it was summertime and you wanted to swim. You're going swimming? Yeah, I'm going to go swimming. Give me a second. Right now? Yeah, right now. <laughs> Guys, Allison is go going to uh, swim for us. Yeah. In the water. <laughs> this is your... Bloop, bloop, bloop. Blue? Yeah. Blue? 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 Gotta go up there. For real, in the summer, this seems like a really great spot to come and hang out in the river and stuff. Like I know it's not a clear river because it's it's an alpine river, so it's green. Like and like so green. It looks thick, you know, but that's just like sand and clay and silt. I was wondering why these alpine rivers and lake are green. Glacial flower. What? Glacial flower. Look it up. Dude, what is that? It's like flour in the water. <laughs> yeah, you're kidding. You're gonna no. make fake cakes. You're gonna make cakes out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you filter it out, you can make a cake with it. It's really good. Yeah, make some good icing. What the hell is a glacial flour? <laughs> you're making shit up. It's not a glacial flour. It's glacial flour. F L O U R. F L O U R. Like baking flour, for real. No, you're, you're... Yeah, that's what's in the water. Stop it like comes off like the... Get out of here. and stuff. Get out of here. It's like the... I don't believe you. You know, the... As I the, think it's just the erosion. It erodes. must just be the erosion so and the stuff. minerals and rocks in there, right? AKA, glacial flower. That's not a thing. Yeah, I looked it up. That's not it a is. thing. You can look it up later. I will look it up later. Good. I'm going to go into a voiceover and be like, Allison was wrong. There's no such thing as glacial flower. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a story about flour. We were just talking about Allison's made-up glacial flour or whatever the hell she calls it. So it was uh, back in the day, Valentine's Day, and I was at work and my dad calls me and he's like, hey, pick up uh, pick a flour or flour or whatever. And I was like, okay. So I go to the grocery store and I buy a bag, a huge bag of flour. Cause I thought maybe he's cooking, you know? Like I thought he's baking for my mom or something. And I get home and he's like, dude, I asked for flowers, flowers, not flower. Anyways, that was my funny story. And actually what's even more interesting than that is the flower bag is called Rose and it had roses on it. And I'm, I'm, this, I'm not kidding, like this flower bag for making baking bread had roses on it. So it just became a joke forever. Look at this branch just like wiggling in the water. Yo, it's having a party. Yeah. Check that out. <laughs> no way. So it turns out that Allison was absolutely right about the glacial flower, and I was wrong. Glacial flower, it turns out, is silt-sized particles of bedrock that flow into the water due to glacial erosion. 
So because the material is so fine, the water appears cloudy or even emerald green sometimes, as is the case in a lot of lakes and rivers in Canada. Anyways, let's get back to exploring, shall we? Allison, me, and Dante are back on the road, and we're climbing up a steep mountain. What will we find at the top? Well, probably an amazing view. What else? Join us next week, next Friday, to find out. Thanks for watching, and see you then.